The chair now recognizes the ranking member of the sub subcommittee, the gentlewoman from Florida, Ms. Kamek, for an opening statement. Well, thank you, Chairwoman Demings. I appreciate your leadership on this issue. And uh, as we've said many times before, we are extremely lucky that Florida has two, uh, two leaders that are focused on our first responders, emergency preparedness, and uh, have extremely personal ties to this. So thank you again for convening this important hearing today on our first responder communications. As we all know, first responders play an invaluable role in communities across America and ensuring that they have the necessary training, equipment, funding, and resources is a top priority. I look forward to working with the chairwoman to address some of the challenges currently facing our first responders, an issue I know that she cares very deeply about. Now, last month, as we mourned the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks, the 9-11 Commission report, which recounts events surrounding that tragic day, calls attention to the fact that the lack of communication among emergency personnel, 911 communication call centers, and individuals in the towers caused confusion, ultimately costing lives. One New York uh, Fire Department chief who was stationed in the North Towers quoted in the report as saying, quote, people watching on TV certainly had more knowledge of what was happening a hundred floors above us than we did in the lobby. Without critical information coming in, it is very difficult to make informed, life-saving critical decisions. I've said this before, my own husband, Matt, he became a firefighter in part because of 9-11, watching 343 men and women run into the towers to save their, their community members, their neighbors, their coworkers. And I can't imagine as the wife of a first responder what it would be like to witness in real time a lack of communication on the ground. Now fast forward after responder, first responders experienced similar communication challenges during Hurricane Katrina in 2005, Congress passed the Post-Katrina Emergency Management Reform Act. This legislation took significant steps to standardize emergency communications across the country by establishing the National Emergency Communications Plan. Now, as a result of the work accompanied, uh, I'm sorry, accomplished by the NECP, a survey conducted in 2018 found that 84% of state and territorial respondents resp reported significant or some improvement in the strengthening of their communications operability. The Post-Katrina Emergency Management Reform Act also helped provide state and local first responders with access to grant funding to develop and implement statewide communication interoperability plans to enhance interoperable communications for public safety and officials at all levels of government. In 2012, Congress took an additional step to improve our nation's emergency communication network by passing the Middle Class Tax Relief and Job Creation Act. This legislation established the First Responder Network Authority, also known as FirstNet, which is responsible for overseeing the build-out and operation of a nationwide interoperable public safety broadband network. This dedicated public safety network has been critical in ensuring that during a disaster, necessary information is able to reach first responders on the ground. While both the Post-Katrina Emergency Management Reform Act and the Middle Class Tax Relief and Job Creation Act made significant improvements to emergency communications, many challenges still remain. One such challenge facing first responder networks is the very real threat of a cyber attack. In fact, a recent survey conducted by SafeCom found that over a third of organizations indicated that cybersecurity incidents have had an impact on the ability of their emergency response providers and government officials' ability to communicate over the past five years. The study also found that fire departments and organizations located in rural areas tend to be the least prepared for cybersecurity attacks, with 62% of fire departments indicating that they do not conduct any cybersecurity planning and over 55% of organizations surveyed indicated that lack of funding is the reason that they do not and cannot invest in cybersecurity. First responders in rural areas like Putnam County, one of my counties in my district, oftentimes do not have the necessary funding to update their technology, or even, and even when they are able to secure the necessary funds, the technology can be unreliable because of a lack of coverage. 
However, while advances in technology may lead to increases in cyber attacks, technological innovations can also be revolutionary. Next Generation 911 enhances the capabilities of today's 911 networks, allowing compatibility with more types of communication to provide greater situational awareness to dispatchers and emergency responders. Next Generation 911 will enable 911 call centers to accept and process voice calls, video, photos, and text message from responders and the public. This capability really could be a game changer for those in need and for those responding to the call. As we continue to work to address the challenges facing emergency communications networks to improve the capabilities across the board, we must work to ensure that we are not pursuing a one-size-fits-all approach that may not accommodate the unique needs that many of our communities face, especially those in rural communities. I applaud the progress that has been made to improve first responder communications over the last 20 years, but we have a long way to go. In preparation for today's hearing, I actually spoke with several of my sheriffs, fire chiefs, and emergency managers. Coming from a rural district, several said we are no better today than we were 20 years ago. So today I look forward to hearing from our witnesses on what additional steps we in Congress can take to ensure that our first responders have the information and connectivity to continue serving our communities. And with that, Madam Chairwoman, I yield back.